For those of you who have signed up to take a course with me this fall semester 2019, I'd like to welcome you to class. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the technologies that I'm going to be using this semester. And although our, our classes are face-to-face, -face, much of the content that we discuss and work with will be found online. This is to help you and give you another way of approaching some of the content, not just what we do in class, but have access to the same information outside of class so that you can spend uh, the necessary time uh, doing some of the uh, activities. So the first thing you need to do when getting started uh, this semester is to go to notion.so. And I'm going to go and sign out and show you what it looks like, show you what the main page looks like. So I'm going to sign out here. And when you go into notion.so the first time, okay, this is what you should see. So when you go into log in, you've, you've got two ways that you can sign in. You can use your Google account or you can create a username and password of your choice. For simplicity's sake, I'll go ahead and use my Google account to sign in. Okay, once you've signed into Notion, you'll notice on the left-hand side of your screen a pop-up menu, which you can toggle back and forth, uh, and you'll see you'll have spaces to add additional pages within Notion if you wish. If you're new to Notion, you won't have any, but you'll notice I have several here that I've been working on, uh, and uh, one of those is going to be actually the class that you're going to be taking. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just to provide a little bit more screen real estate. And you'll notice here that this class begins with the title and there's a discussion section here. Now, all of the pages that I use or that I'm using for my classes are shared publicly. So anyone is able to access this page, access the content, and they're able to leave comments, primarily, primarily leaving comments here in this section. Uh, where there are uh, where there's a discussion and many of the pages will include a discussion so you can go in and simply leave a comment if you wish and and some of the activities that we do in class will involve this section the comment section just below the comment section you'll notice a database and we'll come back to this database here in a few minutes but essentially the database is where all of the content for the class will reside just below the content, you'll have a little introductory video, which in fact is the one that I'm actually creating right now. And then below that, you'll see just basic information about the course. One of the uh, links here and is uh, to the syllabus. So you'll have access to the syllabus throughout the course. And of course, we'll go over the syllabus the first day of class as to the, uh, the objectives of the class and the methodology and so on. Okay, so this is some of the basic information here about the course, and uh, we'll be using Teacher Ease. This is a an online grade book that I'll be using for those degree seeking students or those students who are enrolled in the class. Uh, I'll be maintaining attendance and grades through this uh, site. At the very bottom, you'll notice an educational podcast called In the Classroom, and I've just included links here because some of the podcasts that I create in this podcast might relate to the class and so I just included this link here and if there's any information that I include in the podcast that's part of the course itself it will be in the database that I mentioned earlier but I just wanted to include this link down at the bottom the podcast uh, if anyone's interested uh, you might find it useful to uh, to listen to some of the the podcast but this is uh, just it's it's optional, okay? So if you want to uh, listen to it, great. It's uh, it's up to you, but it's not going to be necessarily a part of the class. Okay, so let's go back to the database. And again, the database, I call it the content roadmap, but essentially everything that we do in class is going to be built around different pages that have set up in these blocks. And so you'll see here, I opened up the syllabus block. This will be one of the first things that we do. And you'll notice... It has information that relates to this activity that we plan to do this first day. So this first view that I'm showing you here is a weekly view. In, first, in fact, I've, I've called it the current week because I'll typically only include three to four weeks, uh, maybe one or two weeks in advance, maybe one or two weeks 
in, fr in the past. But this is probably your one of your best views as to see what what we're doing week to week. You'll notice along the right-hand side of your screen that there are additional weeks that you can access if you want, um, but we will focus on just the most current weeks depending on the, the, the week that we happen to be in. Now, if you click on this down arrow here, you'll notice that there are many different views that, or many different ways that you can access the same information. So if I click on the calendar view, you'll notice now the same content can be accessible or you can access it by day. And so our first day of class, we're basically gonna be focusing on these blocks, these in, this information. So you can easily access this from the calendar view, select each of these and, um, and see and access the same information. If you wanna open, notice that this opens up kind of as a pop-up, but if you wanna open it up as a separate page, just simply click on open as page and you have that same information as a page. Anytime that you open up a sub page within the, this website, you'll have a, a breadcrumb here along the top of your screen where you can easily go back uh, to a prior screen. So if I wanna go back to the content roadmap, I can click on content roadmap and I'm back to the calendar. If I wanna go back to the main page, I can click on grammar and context one. This is the main page and this is where, again, this is where we were at the beginning. This is essentially the home page of the, of the class site. So calendar is another uh, a view. We have an all weeks view. This is probably not gonna be your favorite uh, way of viewing the information only because it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. You have to scroll all the way down here to scroll horizontally using the slider bar and then scroll back up to see. Uh, obviously there's not a lot of content right now because I'm in the process of populating this information. But be assured as we move through the semester that all of these weeks will fill up with different content. And as we, as we go through, it's, it's quite possible that, that some of the order might change by week. So I can easily move these blocks around uh, as needed, um, depending on the order and which days we happen to be doing uh, certain activities. Okay, so this is another, I think, uh, an important view. We have a view by unit. Okay, so in this particular class, there are three units. And so you'll be able to find all the information listed by unit by clicking on this view. Now, the first three or four views from current week, calendar, all weeks, and units, this is going to be fairly uniform or pretty standard, regardless of the type of class that I'm teaching in Notion. This particular class, though, I think will benefit from additional views. In this case, I have one called Context. Now, this course is called Grammar and Context. So I wanted to create uh, what's called a property listed as context so that I can easily plan and students can also access the different activities that we did by context. Okay, so these are some of the current contexts that I have uh, considered so far. Again, this is blank because I'm still in the planning stages, but the idea is to list uh, the content by context. And because this is a grammar class, of course, we're gonna have another property that is based on grammar structure. So here you'll be able to find content based on, in this case, grammatical structures. So if you, for example, need additional help with verbs, you're, you're gonna find uh, several blocks here under the category of verbs in order to review anything or even see something maybe we haven't seen yet. You're able to access this information by, by selecting this type of view. So this is a grammar structure view. And then the table, probably the least useful for from a learning standpoint or for, you know, for the learner. Uh, this is just basically one database table with all of the information. Okay, so probably the most useful is going to be current week. Uh, certainly for me as the instructor and most learners will find this useful. And for those who want, want additional or need additional help based on grammatical structure, you might also benefit from using the, gr uh, the grammar structure. But you, you have access to all of these. And again, it's all of the same content. It's just uh, providing different ways to access all of this information that, that we're 
that we're uh, doing face to face in class. So basically, that's what I wanted to share with you getting started uh, in Notion. Most of, again, all of what we do pretty much will be in, uh, in Notion. And I will um, we'll go into the first day some of the specifics of the private vault. There's going to be some information that's going to be private in nature that I'm going to be sharing with everyone. So we'll talk about that, how to access that. Uh, that won't be accessible through Notion, although the links will be accessible. Uh, you'll need a password that I'll provide you the first day uh, so that you can access and download content from from a file or a folder, and uh, you can access that information here on the main page. All right, now, one of the main reasons why I'm using Notion, this is the first semester I've tried using Mo uh, Notion, uh, but one of the things that I really like is how this looks on a cell phone, on a mobile device. So let's look at basically the same class now on a mobile phone. Okay, now I'm going to show you what this looks like in Notion. I'm using an Android device here, but it's going to be very similar uh, if you're using an iPhone, for example. Regardless of the browser that you want to use, uh, I'm going to use Firefox. But this is basically what the website looks like on my mobile device. And you'll see here, if I scroll up and down, I can also scroll left to right to view the content. And notice in this database here, if I scroll left to right all the way from the left, I have this pop-up menu that uh, we looked at earlier on the desktop where you can access different Notion pages. You can do the same by clicking these three lines, this hamburger icon at the top left-hand corner of your screen to get that same uh, option. But here, you'll see that I'm looking at the database, and this is the all weeks view. If I want to look at the current week, I just select there at the top, that drop-down menu, and now I have the current week. If I want to see the calendar, I can select calendar, and uh, this is the calendar view, and if I want to see a particular day, I can select on the day, and then it pops up the different uh, content that uh, is related to that particular day. If I click Done, it, it takes me back to the main page, and you'll see here the video, the syllabus, the main information about the course. Uh, it's pretty much all of the same. In fact, it's exactly the same information, but you'll notice it's presented um, as you scroll down here, you're, you're able to access all the same information. And this is one of the things I really like about Notion is just how it looks on a mobile device. It's, uh, it's well organized and it looks, uh, it looks nice. So this is how you can access the same information here using a browser um, to, to access the course content. Now you can also, and this is totally up to you, but you can install the Notion app. And if you see at the bottom left corner of the screen, if I select this uh, icon here, this will take me into Notion. And this is the same course now. And you'll notice that it's pretty similar to what it looks like on a browser. I, I do like the app a little bit better, but honestly, uh, you could get by just fine without the, the app and use your own browser on your cell phone and really have no issues whatsoever getting around the content. But certainly, if you wish, you can also access this uh, same course content using the, uh, the Notion app. Okay, so basically this is what I wanted to cover in this short video to give you kind of a, a background and an overview of what the course content looks like. We're going to be go going into it a little bit more in depth as we uh, get into the course. But I wanted to provide you some of this, uh, this basic orientation about how to access some of the course content. If you do have any questions or issues about accessing this course content or any of the technologies that I've talked about here so far, reach out to me. Uh, you can send me an email, of course, ask me in class, or come by my office.